Hey, come on, let's go. We are almost there, aren't we? We've come a long way. <laughs> What's so funny? You remind me of myself. Hmm? Before, the closer I came to Xanarkin, the more I wondered. When we arrive, Brasco will call the final Aeon. He will fight Sin, then die. I thought my mind was made up long before. But when I stood here, my resolve wavered. Hmm. Never would have figured. Legendary Guardians choke sometimes too, yeah? Huh? Legendary Guardian. I was just a boy. A boy about your age, actually. I wanted to change the world, too. But I changed nothing. That is my story. I will free you before you can drown in your sorrow. It is better for you to die in hope than to live in despair. Let me be your liberator. Now! This is it! Now is the time to choose. Die and be free of pain. Or live and fight your sorrow. Now is the time to shape your stories. Your fate is in your hands! Hi everybody, this is Kevin and welcome to another video. And today I'd like to share my experience on replaying Final Fantasy X for at least the 10th time, probably more. I mean, Christ, I, uh, <laughs> I'll show you, I got the PS2 copy, the Greatest Hits version. You know, I was a little late to the party, but I eventually did play on the PS2 back in the day. And uh, just recently played through for the first time on the PS4. Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster, getting the Platinum Trophy, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you some gameplay stuff, my stats, and just talk about it a little bit. So, back with the PlayStation 2, I mean, I can't tell you. This is the, the stereotypical summer game. Start out on Besaid Island. Well, before that, you know, Xanarkin, and then go into, uh, well, Baj Temple, which we learned later with Riku early on in the game. And uh, Besaid Island, and, and just... Like, me growing up, the first Final Fantasy game I ever played, of course, was 7. Like, many people did. Uh, I love 7. Then played 8, which I really did. Like, when I played as a kid, I didn't like it. But playing it recently, 8 is top tier as well. I actually have a, a tier ranking list of all my favorite Final Fantasy games. I like 9. I don't like 9 as much as other people like it, but I do like it. But 10 was on another level for me. It was the first game that I really played that had full voice acting. I mean, there were some games on the original PlayStation that had voice acting, but with Final Fantasy X, all the main characters had voice acting. Of course, you talk to some of the NPCs and it's still text, although there were some that, that spoke. Uh, the voice acting done very well, in my opinion. I know a lot of people uh, pick on, on Titus, or T it's Titus in Dissidia. I always called him Titus, like Tide, because, you know, the water. That's what I always thought it was, like Titus, but it's Titus, which put two E's there, right? But, um, you know, all, all the characters are great. I mean, I love Auron. That's why I just showed him right away. Yuna's great. I love Riku. Waka. Who doesn't love Waka? The only one maybe I'm so-so with is Kimari. Although, his arc is awesome with, with, you know, going back to Mount Gagazette. You know, winning the respect of Yankee and Biran. And then, eventually, when you see Seymour later on. Oh, I'd love to speak to the last Ronso. His race was truly gallant. Like, fucking awesome. And then, Kimori. The spirits of the Ronso will help my spear. Like, fucking awesome, dude. It actually, fun fact, I, I think the name is Joe, not Joe DiMaggio, it's John DiMaggio, not the baseball player. John DiMaggio, the voice actor who voice acted Kimari and Waka, various other video game characters, and most recently, Heidegger from the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I thought was so cool. Uh, of course, James Arnold Taylor, who uh, many people know, voicing Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Star Wars animated series, voicing Titus. Which, uh, you know, he, he did great. Everyone picks on him with the, the laughing scene. But in the context of it, the laughing scene is truly great. Makes makes a whole lot of sense. It's the fact that he realizes, I'm never going back home to the to my dreams, Anarchy. I'm here in this, what I think is a made-up world, but really the, the real world. And he's just stuck there. And at that point, has uh, gained the respect and support of everyone becoming a guardian. And, uh, you know, going forward on his journey right after they got Oren in the party. And, um... You know, replaying it does kind of start out slow, you know, especially if you played it a hundred times. 
And the cloisters are very annoying, but everything else, like the combat's awesome. Really, this was the last turn-based uh, Final Fantasy RPG we ever got. I mean, after that, I never played 12. I'm going to play it at some point. I never did play it. But uh, that's like sort of MMO-esque, they say. Uh, 13 was god-awful. <laughs> I don't know. what that, that was just them testing the graphical capabilities of the PS3. 15, which I played later. I played uh, just a year or so ago for the first time. And did enjoy it for what it was worth, you know, accepting the way Final Fantasy is now. Uh, but, you know, it's not turn-based. And really, if you didn't play the Royal Edition with the great DLC, I mean, that game is not that great either. I did love Final Fantasy VII Remake, though. The, the combat in that game was terrific. I can't wait to see what they're going to do with 16. And hopefully we'll get Part 2 shortly with uh, Remake. But it, it is, for people saying, oh, it didn't sell well, it's not happening. It's going to happen. You can see, like, the cliffhanger with Yuffie, the Yuffie DLC, when they're uh, going to Calm with... Uh, you know, driving in the truck with the Chocobo guy, it's, it's happening. So, you know, just a whole lot of fun going back. Uh, I'm going to show you right here <laughs> on the um, PS5 menu. And uh, let's get the sound on so you can hear the, the great... I still have the um, Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, theme there, which is just so, so beautiful. And, well, you see, I got the trophy, and I guess we can go through that right now. Um... Really, a lot of these trophies are pretty difficult, man. And I do like to get all the, the, the trophies in my games. I'm, I'm going to show you later on, too, some of the missteps I have. But uh, with this, a lot of the stuff early on is, um, you know, relatively easy. You can't really miss an Abed, Abed Primer. The Blitzball match, if you want to win the first Blitzball game, you got to get the Jack shot. And uh, otherwise, forget it. Because the, the Luka goers are tough, man. This is a story-based uh, trophy. This is... Um, Deal with Riku. I mean, that's what you use. Riku. Well, I guess some people make Kamari the thief early on. Uh, get all the part. That's story based as well. The underwater date scene is, is story based. A Blitzball tournament. God, getting the celestial weapons and for that with the Blitzball tournament. Getting the celestial weapons is such a royal pain in the ass. And like I said, I played the PS2 version a bunch of times, but I've never maxed out the Spear Grid before. I've never in, in the PS2. I don't think the Dark Aeons were even available. I think that was just the Japanese version, and they brought it in the HD remaster. And you know, I never really bothered with any of these things. Although you know, playing Blitzball a few times, y you get it. Like when I when I played it back in the day, uh, just trying to do the stories against the Luka Goers, I, it made no sense to me. But playing it now, it it does make sense. It's just annoying. You get to do like 20 different games to get Waka's. Um, all his reels, and, and to get the, uh, the ultimate weapon, the celestial weapon, the jack shot. Uh, <laughs> well, no, this is, I think is just doing the regular chocobo training. Yeah, this is just, def that's not the, the time trial one. Again, story-based, story-based. This was a, a royal bitch. This took me like two hours to do this, the lightning dodge. And there's a certain spot where you just walk back and forth and continue to press X, but... You have to take breaks. You can't do it all the way through because it just... <laughs> you're you're going to lose patience. And you, you got to do like... I was doing like 30 at a time and taking a break. Uh, here's optional Aeons, getting Anima. Uh, this is all pretty standard. Uh, this you just have to have a, lot, have a lot of gill. This I was most proud of. I've never done this before. I never did this in the PS2 version. I, I never had the patience for it. And I got lucky, man. I, I did this and it literally took me <laughs> like five tries. And I got it. And this is all random based because... The balloons spawn in different areas, and you have to make sure you get the, the five or six balloons that spawn in the very beginning. Sometimes you only get two or three, and if you're lucky, you get five or six, and you have to get them. That's the key to winning that trophy. Uh, this is just in. This is actually like story based too. When you're um, fighting against um, Seymour's anima, when you get Shiva, and Shiva does that. Uh, well, that was Heavenly Strike. Yeah, that was um, the overdrive I used. Uh, yeah, spend Gil for got for. Uh, for bribe, this is a uh, farmer to get auto haste for everybody. Get all the jack spheres. You got, <laughs> you got to be dark Val for people like that. Uh, same thing. This is uh, grinding a little bit, getting uh, stealing items and whatnot. Waka, Waka is the best party member. This is another difficult one. The Chocobo controls are so goddamn awful in this game, and the camera angle is terrible. You know, it just doesn't work out. Max out the spear good. I did it with Titus first. And, uh, you know, uh, all the, the reels for Waka, that's playing Blitzball a million times. Uh, this is, uh, learning all the enemy abilities of Kamari with Lancet. 
Mm, all the Aeons, Celestial Weapons, all the Albed Primers. The last one I got was actually in Besaid. I missed the first one in Besaid. I couldn't believe it. So I had to be Dark Balafor. And then with the Spear Grid, what I eventually did, this was so goddamn annoying too, because I missed one. Like, you know how you have the empty nodes, so you had to go back and fill them? And I missed one, and I, I thought I, I was, um, I unlocked it. I'm like, where is it? I couldn't find it. So I had to get this thing called an attribute skill to figure out where it was. And there were actually two empty nodes, which sucked. Um, Penance, that's the final boss. Uh, you know, this boss has 14 million HP, and I wasn't going to sit around and do that. So I literally, I didn't use Yojimbo for anything else. But I, I literally you pulled out Yojimbo with Overdrive, because I think that makes Z Zanmato more effective. And I gave him every gill I had, and he did Zanmato on the first try, because I didn't want to fight this boss, and this is the last trophy I needed. So, yeah, I cheated, but I don't give a shit. I literally gave him all the gill I had. Uh, Nemesis. There's my party that I use. Auto life on everybody, and uh, Waka's Overdrive's giving in trust to him. And this, you just have to watch a movie, The uh, Eternal Calm. So, yeah, let's pop in the game. Um, you know, just so much fun going back, playing it. Like I said, I, I try to play this game. <laughs> There's Unit in Ten Two. I've never actually played Ten Two. If anyone has played Ten Two, let me know in the comments down below. I've been filtered by the, um, you know, the pop uh, singing, dancing, and the outfits and everything. And where the hell did Pain come from? You would think Lulu would be in the party instead of Pain, right? Because <laughs> you have Riku and Yuna, or her cousins, and Riku and her uh, scant. Well, Yuna too, and both in their scantily clad outfits, despite like Yuna, you know, being a uh, conservative, you know, summoner. <laughs> She's wearing that the ass shot, and just look at Riku's outfit. I mean, holy shit, dude. So, yeah, I'll just pop, pop in the game here, show you my abilities and um, my stats. I have max stats for everybody except the luck because, well, luck. <laughs> Try and grind that stat. That's freaking impossible, dude. So, and I have uh, myself saved in B State Island. I have these various saves for different storyline things that I'd like to see again, like the um, um, fighting bosses and Jack. And what I did, I, I kind of regret doing this when I fought Jack at the end. There is I'd already maxed everybody out, and um, so I was doing <laughs> 99, 99, 99 damage to him. And in the second phase, when he pulls the sword out, it's really difficult. But I, <laughs> I like killed him in one turn. So I kind of regret that. So everybody's got, you know, their max stats. This is my most used team, Titus, Orin, and Waka. I know a lot of people like to use Riku for her overdrives, but I never really did. I sort of just use in trust with, with, with Waka and the attack reels. That's the most effective to me. But, um, you know, of course, the ultimate weapons are everybody. I love these sage music, too. That's why I'm here. This is, like, the best theme in the game. Um, well, no, he's got the peaceful... Sanctuary is the real shield. Peaceful shield is just so no encounters. But of course, auto haste, auto phoenix, auto protect, and the ribbon I give to Titus. I didn't grind ribbons because, like I said, you, got, you need 99 dark matter. Good luck with that. Uh, Orin's got his ultimate weapon and the phoenix bracer. Yeah, instead of ribbon, I'll just give him stone proof. Because stone proof is essentially like auto kill if you don't have that. Especially facing against like anima and um, some of the other dark aeons. I think Bahamut too does uh, stone attack. And then same thing, he's got his Celestial Weapon and same thing, Auto Haze, Auto Phoenix. I, I didn't have enough for Auto Protect, so I just gave him Auto Potion. And really, as far as the party members go, and I like that you can switch them all in throughout the game, uh, throughout battles. Um, at a certain point, I don't use Lulu or Kamari at all. I just don't find them useful. Kamari, I typically, it's weird with him. I take him down to get Steel early on, just to have that. And then... See, I was kind of watching H.C. Bailey's Let's Play, just for, like, help. And what he did is he took Kamari down uh, Lulu's Spear Grid, which I did here. But I didn't find him all that useful. Because, like, Lulu is good for regular enemies with, with the uh, weaknesses. But as far as bosses, I don't think the magic's too useful. You just you just use Waka <laughs> or Orin. And, and Titus becomes an effective attacker as well. Uh, but you see, I have zero gill because I spent it all on Yojimbo to kill Penance. And I don't even care about that. And you see my hours there. You can beat this game in like 50 hours if you're just doing the story. But grinding Don Tomary and getting everyone's spear grids. Uh, this is the time it takes. And again, here's like my equipment. I didn't even give anyone... Like I said, I don't even use Lulu at a certain point. Um, same thing with Riku. Like I use Riku for certain things. But uh, once you use spear grid and you get like... 
her abilities for other characters. There's really no use in switching people out. Uh, Kamari, same thing. Yuna, I did use a few times, so I gave her auto haste. But, um... Yeah, and here's, like, the glory of the spear grid. Like, zoom out a little. Like, you can see of every character. Pretty cool. What I eventually did, too, because I couldn't even farm the Lux Spheres, and I just used Clear Spheres and turned the Lux Spheres into Strength Spheres. So everyone has really low luck. So when I was fighting the Dark Aeons, um, I, ha I had to rely on overdrives. Like, you see, every stat's max except luck. And to fight the Dark Aeons, you need to have, like, a 70 luck. Which... <laughs> You can't do that. Are you fucking kidding me? That's impossible. So everyone's got max stats except for luck, which is cool. I'm very proud of this just because, like I said, I played the PS2 version a million times, but really never had the um, the desire to to do any of this because, like, trophies really do incentivize you to, to unlock everything, in my personal opinion. And, and oh, just the music, man. It's, it's fucking awesome. So, um... Let's go back out here. I'll show you the other trophies again. So, like, you see, I, I typically get all the trophies. Like, the last game I played, and I did a video on this as well, Trials of Mana and Dragon Quest XI, talking about that. But, like, Langrisser 1 and 2. Like, I played Langrisser 1, but I haven't really gone through Langrisser 2. Like, you see, I got all the Langrisser 1 trophies. That's why that's only halfway. Um, this, I downloaded it and tried to play it once, and it's just, it's not for me. And I wish I could just delete it, because it's an eyesore. And these really bother me too, because like, look, I got all the, I got all the trophies in Final Fantasy 15. Uh, these things are impossible. I've tried it countless times for for these things for uh, Gladio and, and Prompto and all that. Like that, I got this is the multiplayer. This is a bug trophy because this doesn't even work. Uh, Ignis, same thing, like impossible. Um, what's it? The, all the data lot. Like, yeah, I'm not going to the Pityos ruins. Fuck that, Arden. Like, that just bothered me. Like, I had the Platinum, but it's not even all the way through. And then same thing with Spider-Man, which I'm never going to play this game again. I'm fine playing it once. But the only trophy I'm missing is playing the game again uh, with ultimate difficulty. And fuck that. I played it once. That's enough for me. Like, you see here with 8, 7, 7 Remake. And uh, well, that's all I got on the PS4 for now. But, um, good stuff. And at some point, you know, I'm going to do this. Trails of Cold Steel. Start this uh, adventure. But, uh... Yeah, you know, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So let me go back right here. So here I am. But yeah, I, I can't recommend this game enough. I mean, so many great memories playing. Um, it's just it's just awesome. And really, a lot of people see this as the end of Final Fantasy being truly great, which I can see a point to that, uh, seeing the direction things have gone. Although, I, I like I said, I, I love 7 Remake. I thought that was the game of the year in 2020. I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, it's the plot change. It's like, dude, Seven is great, and, and then you have all the other shit, like Advent Children and Dur Dirge of Servers and all this stuff. It's like, that's terrible. So at least they're kind of working that in there to make more sense, maybe. Like, I know in, in the Yuffie DLC, uh, you have two characters from Dirge of Cerberus. And I think in Advent Children, it's been a while since I've seen that, but I think Vincent and Yuffie are, like, more uh, close for some reason. So, anyway, highly recommend. Uh, this, I don't even think there's many of these copies available. Um, I think it's pretty cheap on the PSN or maybe Steam or whatever, and uh, just a whole lot of fun. So at this point, what I typically do when I play a long JRPG too is I like to take a break from gaming because that's what I like to play. I like to play turn-based JRPGs. So I am currently in my free time now watching the anime series Samurai Champlo. So that'll probably be my next uh, big review or whatever. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What you thought if you recently played Final Fantasy X? Uh, what you thought of um, you know my thoughts on it? And if you can actually red pill me on 10 too, because like I said, I've been filtered by, um, you know, the <laughs> girls. <laughs> Although people say that the combat is, is fucking awesome. It's just the story is weird. And brother, um, is, is like a purr, right? Riku's brother <laughs> talking to Albed. And also let's talk more about story points. Like the fucking story is awesome. Um, like the whole scene with home. It, it's sad. Like, I almost got a tear with the home scene. Uh, with Sid, like, time for, when, when you go to other places where you're, where you're monstering, time for the final showdown with Sid. Let's get the show on the road. And he <laughs> talks like that. It's fucking awesome. So I love it. It's a great game. I love it. It's, it's terrific. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.